emergency broadcast. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again? Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is DeCobbs Prepper with a video about the Signalink USB audio interface for digital communications on amateur radio. Uh, this week I've received several questions about this device and this product and I've done previous videos but I didn't go that much in depth and I was actually trying to help one sub troubleshoot a problem but it's kind of difficult over email so I figured I'd do a video about it and kind of do an overview on digital communications and what options are out there. On this slide here on the left, of course, I have the uh, old-fashioned CW key, which in fact is a form of digital communications. And you can get one of those for about 25 bucks. On the top of the screen, I got a Cam XL, Cantronics, Packet Pactor modem, and they're about $400. And on the right-hand side of that, I have the SCS Pactor 4 or P4 Dragon modem, and that's about 1400 bucks. And then here in the center, I have the Signalink USB audio interface, which is about $119. So as you can see, there are a lot of options with varying prices. Uh, some are very expensive and some, of course, are very cheap with the CW key. But the Signalink USB audio interface, I think, is a great product uh, for entry-level data communications for people just starting out in amateur radio and wanting to try some of the different digital modes. So what is a Signalink USB audio interface? Well, I have a block diagram here, and on the left you have your computer. Then there's a standard USB cable between the computer and the device. And then between the device, there's a radio-specific cable that connects to the radio, which provides transmit audio going out of the unit, then receive audio coming in from the distant station, and of course push to talk. So when you have to transmit your audio out, the signal link USB will generate the, the key condition and actually make the radio transmit. And what's happening here is your computer's taking digital information, converting it into audio or sound, in the Signalink USB audio interface and that sounds being transmitted out over your radio. The receiving radio receives that sound, they process it on their audio interface and then they respond in turn converting digital information into audio to get transmitted out over the radio. Of course you'll receive it your radio, that sound will be passed to the Signalink USB and that's converted into digital information which is displayed on your computer. And I've done videos in the past of doing peer-to-peer -peer digital communications and radio email. Where to start? Well, the first place you're going to have to start, of course, is you're going to have to buy a Signalink USB audio interface. And then you want to visit a website called winlink.org. And I'll put the links down below and download a program called RMS Express. This is the program that will reside on your computer. This is the one that I use. There's lots of other programs out there, but I find this program to be the best uh, because it offers two options. It allows you access to the winlink.org email system to send and receive radio email, but it also supports what's called peer-to-peer -peer communications. So if email's down or you can't connect to an email node, you can connect between two stations. Maybe you have a friend across the country or outside the state or at another location. Your two stations can communicate with each other without having to go through the winlink.org system. You can connect peer-to-peer, radio-to-radio, -peer, -radio, and send and receive digital communications. And here's what the RMS Express program looks like. And you'll see I have in the red box up there, Open Session, which shows you the session you're opening in the RMS program is called a Win More Session. So when you download this program, there'll be lots of options, Packet, Pactor, Telnet, and one of the options is Win More. And the Win More feature in RMS Express is what will communicate with the Signalink USB audio interface for your radio station. Here's my signal link. I had to take it apart, and I think this is an area where some people run into problems. This isn't really a plug and play device. You got to do some configuration with this device and read the manual. And one of the configuration settings you absolutely have to get correct is the jumper settings for your radio. And you can see these yellow wires here I have standing up. They're actually labeled G for ground, then you have PTT, then you have the microphone and the speaker audio and you jumper these wires over to the other side of this chip holder and make the connections to the pins that are actually leading to your radio and the manual will cover this because no two radios are the same and some radio companies put the push to talk on pin 4 or 
five or one or two and you don't want to get this wrong and some radios actually have voltages on their microphone jacks so you really want to get this piece right this is critical when you get your signal link is go through the manual look at the jumper settings inside the unit and make sure they match up perfectly with your radio you'll also need a radio specific cable to connect between the signal link usb interface and your radio now if you're not confident in your soldering skills or your cable making skills there's many companies out there that make commercial cables specific for radios to interface with this device. And you'll see those listed on the SignalLink USB website. So if you're thinking about getting one, you might want to consider just ordering the cable for your radio. And you won't have to worry about that piece. Then all you'll have to do is come in here and get the jumpers set up correctly. So I went through this for my radio. I was using this for another project. And went back in and double checked and had to reconfigure the jumpers for my specific radio, the Motorola MyCom 2E. And in this case, for my radio, uh, the speaker has to go over to pin 1. The microphone actually has to connect to pin 4. And then the PTT connects to pin 3. And pin 5 has to be the ground. So this is the configuration for my radio. It may not be the same for your radio, so you always want to double check. I'm just showing you this slide as an example. Okay, guys. I've got the desktop recorder going and a separate camera capturing audio so you can hear what's coming out of the radios here. So we'll go ahead and open up RMS Express. We'll come up here and open a Winmore session. You can see here there's all these options, but we're going to select Winmore to connect to the Winlink 2000 system or winlink.org. We'll open up a session, and here's your waterfall screen over here. It'll actually, tell you what your signal quality is, and I don't know exactly what all these settings are, but this is just an entry-level demonstration for you because I'm learning as well, and I'm hoping I'm addressing some of the questions I've been getting. Now I've already come in here and selected a channel, but the software will update automatically over the internet and tell you what stations are out there listening and what their frequencies are, but I have one already in there. So I'll go ahead and close that, and I'll go ahead and start the connection here, and you'll hear my radio call out. We'll turn that down a little bit. And then we should hear the distance station respond. Here's the distance station. Now we're connected to W1EO. You can actually hear the high level of noise on the channel. So it shows that this capability is robust. I'll go ahead and turn these down so you don't have to hear the static. And as you can see, that worked quite well. Uh, low cost modem gives you digital communications. I use the same program here when I'm using the expensive modems. It's just a different avenue to gain access to the network. And I think it affords a good option for people interested in digital communications as part of their emergency preparedness plans and just a general good addition to their amateur radio station. And again, I hope I hit some of the questions that my subs had. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with a video on the SignalLink USB sound card interface for digital communications. Bye, guys.